Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. In this one, I want to just uh, have a bit of a discussion about this kind of fun little game thing the official Avatar Instagram put together, Build Your Pro Bending Team. So you, it's basically sort of fantasy pro bending, just for a bit of fun. Uh, they're saying you get $10 and you have to construct a pro bending team from the following list here with obviously certain characters worth more than others and that creating limitations for you and part of the reason i decided like oh to, to actually do a video on this compared to um you know just maybe ignore it as something that not particularly important is just that i saw in the comments basically you have to scroll down quite a bit before you actually get to someone who creates a team of three so like you have to scroll all the way down here before someone actually puts a team together uh, and even then, like, it's only one person. Um, I think when you scroll further down, there's more people who actually put a team together. But still, you know, not a lot of people doing it properly. As in, considering that you need three for pro bending, that you need three elements. And um, thinking about the characters in a pro bending sense. And not just your sort of standard, you know, versus battle, power scaling kind of discussion. Which pro bending is different all of the rules in place for pro bending mean that certain high level characters are maybe not going to be suited for what happens here because the aim of the rules for each uh, element is effectively to make it so that you know effectively you are firing the same water bending attack regardless of who your bender is the firebenders you're firing effectively the same fireball and earthbenders, of course, have the standard discs to use, and there's no real way to use them better than another bender from a pure bending point of view. So it really evens the playing field on a power level, um, and so it actually puts a lot of the focus on basically the raw physicality or athleticism of the actual characters, which typically in pro bending, it means what you're looking for is um, someone who is very agile, so good at dodging uh, or can do a lot of the sort of tricking uh, kind of flips like certain other characters. Um, so that that's important to note as we go through this, that we are thinking about these characters from the perspective of, well, earthbenders can only bend a couple of earth discs, uh, firebenders can't do powerful firebending attacks, waterbenders can't use like uh, ice, steam, or anything like that. They are basically only allowed to blast uh, a second in duration. It's the same for firebending. So it means you only get your sort of standard fireball or standard stream of water. You can't do anything else. All those other things are illegal and will get you thrown out of the game. Um, similarly, and waterbenders are the only ones allowed, only allowed to aim for the head. And, you know, you have things like that. So... That's what you have to keep in mind throughout all of this. So, so let's go through the, the list here first before I decide who I want on the team. So in the $5 tier, the highest tier, they have put Ang, Katara, Korra, and Toph. So I think the characters who make a lot of sense here are definitely uh, Korra, Katara, Ang. Um, from a pro bending point of view, I'm not sure if Toph should be ranked this highly or, okay, we assume, we accept that she is ranked here. I'm not sure you necessarily want her as your earthbender on your team. She is one of the characters who obviously objectively is basically either one or two, I think on most people's list as top uh, earthbender. Boomy would be the other one. Uh, and you can see he's down here, second highest tier. But both characters in a way, are they ideal for a pro bending team given what their styles are and what is expected from the pro bending style? And especially the earthbenders who I feel are the most limited by the uh, rules of pro bending. That you can only use a couple of earth discs. And there's extra rules in place about that where you can't just take a whole stack of them out. And obviously you can't bend them to be anything. So you have to keep them in that form. So is Toph going to be able to do the defense that she usually puts up? Boomy obviously can't do large scale earthbending which is kind of his, his go to thing. Now, I still think they're going to be pretty solid, even with the limitations, but it is not these characters, you know, at their best. So your money is probably spent elsewhere 
rather than going for Toph and Boomy when you probably can't utilize them to their full ability because of the rules. So um, Toph is probably not a character you want, otherwise you very much limit yourself because you have interesting things like a lot of the best waterbenders are up here at the top. Uh, otherwise, you have to go to the lower tiers um, and a bit further down in terms of the, the skill level that you want. Um, so you kind of want to maybe keep a lot of money just to choose that waterbender at the end since it seems a little bit more limited. But uh, Katara, I think, would make for a pro bender. Of course, she doesn't have any experience there, but I think her style is not super suited and completely rooted in just pure traditional style and um, how quickly she picks up all the different styles and incorporates them and um, I think gets across that yeah she, she'd adapt to pro bending quite easily and she is not too focused on being sort of a power water bender she is very agile so um, I think Katara is a good shot Obviously, Korra is going to probably be a lot of the, the go-tos uh, in this tier because, one, she's an avatar, so she can play as your waterbender, your earthbender, or your firebender. Um, but, of course, you are going to have to specifically choose that because you, you, they're, they're not allowed to use multiple elements. That is a specific avatar rule, is that they have to be assigned one role on the team. So Korra in the Fire Ferrets is their waterbender. She can't play as the Firebender or as the Earthbender unless Makon Bolin sort of uh, sub out and they bring in a new Waterbender. So realistically, you are probably going to be using Korra and in, in a way, most of the avatars you're probably going to be using as your Waterbender on your team. So Korra is really good, just the pro bending style. She is, you know, <laughs> you know, a powerhouse, but is also very, very agile. So she seems sort of like the, the the perfect, you know, pro bending player in a way. Ang, I think, is also quite suited to this role in that his dodging ability is going to be very, very handy since that is a key part of how pro bending works. And again, as a water bender, he's very, very skilled himself. So. Ang is definitely an option if you maybe want your team to be highly, highly evasive. So, um, some good options up here, but, um, you know, maybe not the go-tos, because you saw a lot of people saying Toffs straight away, two Toffs, but um, I don't think that's going to win you pro bending. The, the uh, $4 tier. Azula, Boomy, Iroh, and Mako. So, I already more or less covered Boomy. I think similar to Toff, but I think he'd probably adapt slightly better just because he is your more of your typical uh earthbender i think he might have some clever ways to use the discs and um you know i think he would sort of surprise you in a way again he is more of a powerhouse bender so he might be more playing the style where he does stand his ground and block the attacks directly rather than trying to dodge them and he might have good power in his uh, strike so Boomy, I think, actually, like, could be someone decent. But again, the meta for pro bending does seem to be that if you have a team of characters who are all reasonably powerful and are all very, very athletic, that's probably what you want. Um, so, again, because the, the thing with Earthbenders is that it's a pretty stacked list of Earthbenders all the way down, even to the $1 tier. Going for a high, a high tier Earthbender, I don't think is what you want from this list. Azula and Iroh, again, are, are kind of very kind of different. And I think Zuko probably comes into this conversation as well. Iroh is going to be a sort of boomy like character where I'm guessing he's not going to be doing too much acrobatic dodging and so on. But we have seen that he is a pretty good uh, at defense of firebending, uh, especially countering other firebenders. So. I think he would be actually quite difficult to, you know, get hits on um, because he is so you know, powerful that um, I don't think much would get through and he would be able to block a lot. Uh, but again, is that necessarily what you want? Who knows? Maybe there's an option to just go for a team of just three powerhouses and not have any acrobatics involved and there's a uh, value there. But I do think you're probably in the level four tier thinking more about Mako and Azula. Mako is obviously he's in the higher tier, but he's not in five, which is is probably where, in a way, I I might actually place him, just because he's a captain, leader, really really good at pro bending. He's like the character who the show effectively tells you is probably the most skilled at pro bending, um, and firebender is probably the 
the position where there's maybe the least amount of limits on what they can do compared to what sort of typical firebending is. Um, Because even in sort of normal non-pro bending firebending, you don't typically see like a lot of characters do crazy big power attacks. So pro bending is quite similar to that. So, you know, there's um, there's definitely a a lot of value to choosing just a, a really good firebender on your team. Azula, I think, would suit pro bending quite well also. I do wonder, would there be any ruling issues just with regards to how her blue firebending works? Because um, we do know that her, in her case, she used to have sort of normal fire, but now she has blue, highlighting that I guess she has such control that it's hotter. Um, it makes me kind of wonder, like, is she just so in the zone on what she can do? Can she just purposefully tone the heat, heat down? And do orange fire bending if she absolutely has to. That might be sort of part of it. There might be a thing where they kind of do some tests and actually her fire is maybe too dangerous to to use. But ignoring that slight, you know, potential, I'm assuming she, if needs be, can tone down the heat of her fire if she has to. Uh, she's also very, very uh, acrobatic uh, and I think could adapt to the sort of um, pro bending style quite well. Um you know, yes, yeah, she does power attacks at times, but I think she her style is more suited to, to being similar to the Mako Zuko style than than it is the sort of Iro Ozai kind of type stuff that you'd expect. So Azula could be a good option. The only thing maybe going against her is just that she hasn't played pro bending before, but we're assuming the team will do a little bit of training before entering a tournament, so I think she'd do quite well. The uh three dollar tier, Bolin Zuko Kuvira Kiyoshi. So Bolin, I think, is probably one of your best value propositions because, uh, again, lots of pro bending experience. He is one of the more talented ones at it that we see. Bolin also is just a very, very good uh, earth bender in terms of how precise he is, but also still being agile and having good power. So he feels like, yeah, pretty much a go-to if you really, really want to. Um, Zuko, like I said before, is in a similar sort of category to Mako and Azula in that like he feels like you know pretty agile uh, able to dodge quite well but also strike quite well again I'm, I'm probably leaning more Mako over Zuko but it depends on how much money you have left um so it's a good option if you need a firebender at that tier Kuvira I think would work very well as pro bending I think her style doesn't again focus too much on power and I think she'd be a good sort of leader for your team. Um, I think she would do very well at pro bending. Kiyoshi's an interesting one. Because a lot of people are going to go straight for sort of t- Tav Kiyoshi as your powerhouses. Kiyoshi is a kind of important character in where she's placed on the list. Because she's the only waterbender in the three or four tier. So depending on how much money you have left, you actually might want to go for Kiyoshi to fill in that waterbender role at the end if you're not happy with some of the choices towards the bottom. Um, But again, she is kind of like a a kind of an extreme character in a way where like she is full on powerbender. Not that she's not agile in any way, but of course her big thing is like she's huge. uh, So she might be a very big target on the uh, field. Um... She's probably going to emphasize wanting the the power over any sort of agility. And again, the limitations of pro bending do restrict her particularly because of where, you know, her her strength lies and just how powerful she is. But again, reasonable option here. And for three, there's good value there because she can be uh, fire, earth or water. So um, that's the, the three tier is actually really good. The $2 tier, Hama, Kaya, Ozai, Mingwa. So a lot of waterbenders here, but maybe not exactly the waterbenders that you want. Hama, given that it's old Hama here, and we're not trying to like adjust for like when they're in their primes, probably absolutely not what you want. Kaya, I think, could be very, very solid. Um, I, I think so. You know, she, she's definitely the sort of like, you know, middle of the road, you know, yeah, solid waterbender. Ozai down here, I think is good value. But you sort of wonder with him, uh, might he give away a lot of penalties? Maybe that's a thing with Azula as well. She might give away penalties, but she seems to have a competitive edge based on the the beach where she does play fairly. 
Ozai, I get the impression, probably would maybe push things over the line. So that's something that might work against him. Otherwise, you know, I think he'd be able to adapt to firebending, rel- to firebending pro bending <clears throat> quite well. Um, again, it, 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 the struggle there is that we don't see him firebend without the comet that much, but all firebenders are able to do the the level of attack required for pro bending. So it, it's sort of hard to judge, but um, he's either maybe exactly what you don't want in that he might destroy the team or he is exactly what you want because he's a kind of powerhouse at this level. Mingwa is interesting because you wonder, again, with regards to the rules, her water arms, are they technically allowed? Now, you saw I looked at the rule book there and incorporating everything else we know. I'm guessing that it would probably be the case where she would be asked to have her water arms probably be roughly the size of normal arms. And they would allow her to play with that um, agreement. Now, Mingwa is a character who excels in sort of situations where she can swing around and use her agility because of those water arms to her advantage. The ring allows for some level of that, but you have to play close to the ropes and like bounce off the ropes, you know, um, do the kind of flips off the, the turnbuckle type thing. I'm not sure if that's going to allow Mingwa to be as strong as she is. Otherwise, she then has to be more in the middle of the ring, uh, more doing direct defense or dodging as best she can there. So Mingwa might have limitations on her depending on, you know, what they allow, because it would feel a bit much if she's just allowed to have the, the giant water arms in the middle of a pro bending match. When all the evidence highlights that with water bending, of course, the rules only state that you can only attack someone with a stream of water up to one second. They never really clarify if you're allowed to just pull a lot of water out and hold it like in front of you as a shield. But then when you attack, follow the rules. The The rules in general are a little unclear about that, except for earth bending. Say for like fire bending, are you allowed to like, for instance, create a wall of fire in front of you? So could Zhang Zhang do something like that to have an ultimate defense? It's not necessarily clear it feels like the spirit of the rules is that you're probably not allowed to have sort of you know create bending constructs in a way so Mingwa could be limited or she could actually be a a surprisingly good pick for this uh that really goes on like how you make the rules work with her so the one dollar tier is actually really good so three earthbenders down here Gazan, Lin, Haru all of which seem quite good. Obviously, Gazan just with earth bending, no lava bending, maybe isn't exactly what you want, but I think Lin is probably a better choice anyway. So Lin seems like the perfect, you know, if you spend nine, just Lin as your earthbender is like the go-to thing. And this is part of why I was saying that the strategy here, if we're actually trying to make a tournament out of this, is like Lin feels like the most high value pick here. Because a lot of the other really good benders like Toph and Boomy probably aren't the ones you want necessarily. Paku is good. You maybe wonder, might his age work against him? Um, he, might, he might not be as agile as other characters. But again, for that price, that experience seems quite good. And then Haru is a bit of a kind of random pick at the end here. He's always been like a solid earth bender, but like it's hard to go over the top with him. And why would you ever choose Haru over Lin or Haru over Kazan is, is, the, is the main point there. Um, <clears throat> until we see a little bit more about like how good Haru truly is, that feels like a, yeah, you probably don't want Haru. So um, overall, it's actually, I think, assigned relatively well. I wouldn't have too many like massive complaints about certain characters being placed too low because they have to have a little bit of a strategy to it with regards to yeah certain characters who yeah find the value if you, if you think Lin is badly placed down there of course put her on your team and then you have so much more money to work with with the rest of your team now who would I pick for my team my initial strategy for this is to go straight for okay Mako straight away in at the firebender slot he is the team captain and we build the team around him. That that that's my first impression, is that I just think he is Mr. Pro bending in a way, and we'll go from there. So that leaves us with uh, six left to get a 
waterbender and an earthbender. Now, my next protocol would probably be to be like, okay, do we do Mako and Korra? That brings us up to nine, and that leaves us with one left for an earthbender. But, like I said, there's good value in the in the one tier. So, the very simple, like, top tier team, I think, is Mako, Korra, Lin. That seems like some of the best value I think you can get out of this. Now, <clears throat> similarly, I think there's a few switch arounds you can do just with regards to in the same tiers. I think Mako Katara Lin is probably just as good. Mako Ang Lin is just as good. Probably like Korra Azula Lin also works. Um, and sort of any combination of sort of those, like the uh, a five dollar water bender, a four dollar fire bender, and then a one dollar earth bender is, I think, more or less any combination of them is going to work relatively well for you. Though I think Lin <clears throat> is the really, really standout pick in the one dollar tier. Um, another way I'd go is okay, we stick with Mako as our sort of fire bender kind of captain, and instead of going for the uh, five dollar water bender, instead we accept that okay, we're going to have to go for a lower tier water bender, and say we go Mako Bolin, and then our choice for water benders at that point with three left is Kiyoshi, Hama, Kaya, Mingwa, or Paku. Now, my initial tendency would probably be to go Mako, Bolin, Kiyoshi. That way, Mako and Bolin could work really well together. Kiyoshi can be more of a kind of, you know, target to herself uh, off to the side as the waterbender on the team, um, playing a, a little bit of a different strategy to the brothers. And, and that might make for an interesting sort of kind of like asymmetric team. Um, that, that seems quite good. Otherwise, I'd probably go Mako, Bolin, um, Mingwa, Paku. So we choose four this time with the idea that Mingwa, if the rules go go the right way, she's probably the, the person we're playing with as the waterbender. If they don't, Paku feels like a very nice substitute to have if Mingwa is not allowed. So um, that's an option to choose four characters. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say the, about the only thing that feels like it's missing is that I'd maybe have a Tano somewhere on this list, maybe in the two or three tier. And I think he'd be a really good, just to have that waterbender with pro bending experience who isn't just Korra. Um, beyond that, like I, I'm kind of wondering, like like I said earlier on, the waterbenders, I've, it's, it's, like, the avatars, I feel you sort of have to treat as waterbenders just with the way the list goes. Um, there's maybe some potential for going like, say Korra or Aang as your earthbender high tier pick. And then you know, going from there. The problem there is that that sort of forces you to have to basically be like, say, Korra Earthbender, Kiyoshi Waterbender, um, and then you have your fire Firebender for, what, two left? And then, like, Ozai? So, Korra, Kiyoshi, Ozai could be, like, a pretty powerhouse team. And then you have an interesting dynamic where you can actually switch them because it's two avatars, depending on what game they go into. You can actually have... Um, you know, uh, Korra be your waterbender, Kyoshi be your earthbender, or you could switch if you need to and have Korra earthbend, Kyoshi waterbend. That's a, a benefit to doing two avatars as well. Now, obviously, the way the rule works is that they, I think, they have to go in with an assigned element. They can't switch. I think in between rounds of a game, but in between matches, I think they they would be allowed to change. So that's pretty cool. Um. But like I said, like there's also situations where like, you know, I, I, I went Mako Bolin there. I think you could also do say like Mako Kuvira Kiyoshi. Um, there's there's many options because there are certain characters who maybe don't immediately have the pro bending experience, but I think their skill set would be kind of ideal for pro bending if they ever went for it. So they're my thoughts. Uh, like I said there, um, Mako Kora Lin. I think is probably one of the, the best uh, team choices. Uh, or um, Mako, Bolin, Mingwa, Paku. That's potentially like another good one. Um, they're kind of the, the immediate ones that I'm thinking of. But if you don't want to over-exaggerate the characters who are maybe pro-bender kind of focused and go there in that direction, you know, I can see kind of value in sort of say like Katara... Azula Lin also seems quite good. Um, 
there's there's a lot of good options here if you if you play this game uh, correctly and properly. So in the comments, let me know what your thoughts are. What would be your team for 10 based on this list? And just in terms of the discussion, um, what are your thoughts on, like, say, some of the non-core characters who have never played Pro Bending? Um, how would they adapt to Pro Bending? Do you think, like I should have discussed here, the limitations of Earth Bending in, in Pro Bending would restrict the likes of Toph and Boomy? My Toph in a Pro Bending environment have her blindness maybe come into play a little bit more because she isn't allowed to do as much um, and so on. The likes of, say, Boomy, Iro, Ozai, do you think there's an effective position for them here as more powerhouses who don't dodge as much? But, um, you know, let me know in the comments. But uh, that has been the video. Thanks for watching and bye.